Shoppers everywhere take time out to pause and refresh. And where else but in the fountain where they serve ice cold Coca Cola? And we're live. Yes, we are. Okay, so we are the E Militia, and this is our podcast. It's going to be some very interesting topics of conversation to come, but we're starting it off rather structured by introducing ourselves. And as I, I'm at the top of the list and objectively just the best all round person here, I'm going first. I'm Anglo Libertarian. I live in the UK, and I'm a Libertarian, in case that wasn't obvious enough. It's a very interesting state of affairs to live in such a country with such beliefs to be a, like, an absolute pariah on my own. It's very fucking fun. In terms of ideology, I am a minarchist. I believe that a state should exist to protect your rights, and that is, there's a bit more nuance to it, but that is the vast gist of it. And with, with a group full of ANCAPs, and then we've got one centre libertarian, so it's, it's, it's very interesting topics of discussion. But there we go. That's me moving on to Bloody Revolutions. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Yeah. <laughs> Paradigm Shift 2070. There we go. So I'm Bloody Revolutions, aka Bloody or BR. I'm an anarchist, specifically an anarcho-capitalist, but I believe in a society without a federal government in which voluntary communities of every description could coexist following only the ethos, don't hurt people and don't take their stuff. You Pretty forgot concise. the part where you make pipe bombs. Oh yeah, yeah, I make tons of pipe bombs and I hope to just... <laughs> no, I'd let's like to go on the record and say that he doesn't make pipe bombs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's what you want to tell on yourself. Right, well, let's move on then to Guns and Guillotines. And that, tell us about yourself. I am Guns and Guillotines. Guns for short, or G&G, &G, whatever you want. Born and raised and residing in South Carolina, and I am an advocate for total anarchy. Um, I do support uh, free market ideals, but that is not necessarily something that I would push on anybody. Just like uh, BR was saying, any kind of society can take place in a society where nobody forces anybody to live by a code that they think they should live by. So whatever kind of group wanted to organize and make their own kind of little commune or, or anything would be absolutely fine with me. Well, that's pretty much it. All right. Well, um, I'm kind of the outlier here. Yeah, this will uh, be good. You did this to yourself. <laughs> um, so my Instagram name is uh, Libertarian Punk with an underscore at the end. Um, change that. I'm a, uh, yes, um, I'm a center left libertarian. I guess you could uh, call me a moderate social democrat. I wouldn't consider myself a social democrat to some of the Instagram standards or the political standards, but um, yeah, I live in uh, an extremely red state and. Uh, I hate it, and um, I do believe the public sector does have some play in politics, unlike some of my friends here, but um, I think a good uh, mix of the public and private sector is ideal, and I do believe in libertarian ideals, especially socially, such as the Second Amendment. That's a very important part to society, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. I'm really proud no one butted in too hard there. Yeah, oh, yeah, me too. I, re I really wanted to. I know Guns oh, was just man. probably like downing his drink, like hardcore. Right, yeah, that's exactly what I was doing. Y'all like, <laughs> don't really know, but y'all should be proud of me just based on how much I didn't talk through that. We're, we're all in the group chat. We know how open you are about your opinions. So don't worry about that. Yeah, and I'm sure back. the audience will come to know it in due time as well. Because all of us are so nowhere. polite about our beliefs. Yeah, uh -huh. we're so accommodating and just, you know, we love a good civil yeah, discussion. Know. If you don't agree, then fuck you. Yep, swing in the wind. So, um, imagine being unironically an anarcho-capitalist. 
Oh, oh fuck right. me. I'm just an anarchist. If you want to be a capitalist, you can. It's actually interesting. I'd I feel say like, I feel like mostly everyone in the community identifies as anarcho capitalist. Or uh, if I, I made the differentiation when I started this account because like so many people the second you say ANCAP, they're like, get out. You know? Like, yeah, because I feel like there's I guess you get yeah, because you, you, you say just like libertarian anarchist, I mean free range anarchy, I suppose, like with yeah, no I, yeah, real well, black flag anarchy. Grass fed. Grass fed. <laughs> Gra- no, <I> think <laughs> <about Yeah>. anarchy. <laughs> Yeah, I think you just get a lot more done without saying ANCAP. Like you can say, like, yeah, I believe in capitalism, but you know, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I think do, I think political labels aren't exactly accurate it, sometimes. And because that's, that's... I think I think the the structure or not the structure. I think I think just the connotation of capitalism has been bastardized so much to where you yeah, can take like a, a disturbingly non free markets uh, like nation. Such as America, uh, which is just blazing with with corporate influence directly within the hands of government, and then the world sees that as capitalist simply because there are some people that own capital and then use that to to employ others or whatever. But well, uh... to me, capitalism means a free market, so I can't call myself an anarcho capitalist in good faith because, uh, oh well, I think it's going to confuse a lot of people, and also because I really don't I don't give a fuck like. Well, if uh... it's... <clears throat> It's, it's a really I just interesting think you should point. You be able to do what you want. The, 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 the connotation that capitalism has taken on is a very interesting point because, yeah. as, as we all know, if we want to criticize the USSR while talking to a socialist, first thing immediately, not exactly, real socialism. Yeah. And so. <laughs> not real capitalism. No, but isn't that applicable, <laughs> right? If, if we want to say oh, capitalism totally is. is a free market unhindered by outside state forces because. Benito Mussolini, the man himself, said fascism should really be called corporatism. It is mobilizing the power of the state and the power of industry for the gain of the nation to the detriment right. of the surrounding nations. Um, so why can't we apply that same principle? If we, and I, That's why I take no shame in being a capitalist. I'm, ha- I'm more than happy yeah. to say I believe in a free market, free with, yeah. you know, no other fucking, none of this bullshit and, uh... that comes with it, like I, IP rightless abuses and legislation and over-regulation so that monopolies can form. That's not capitalism. That is closer to fascism than actual capitalism. I the even, uh, words I even heard, fascism himself. I even heard someone claim that Hitler was a, a Keynesian himself. A what? Keynesian. 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 My mistake. Um, but no, I was. that's what I was... Uh, Someone informed me of that. I'm not sure how accurate that is Wait, in did, historical Wait, did you say someone basis. said that he was a Keynesian? Yeah. No, not necessarily. He's not, he's not far from it, though. No, probably, I mean, probably not. I, I mean, mean my, if, my understanding of, of Keynesian is, is capitalism mixed with um, forms, of, forms of social policies. Kind, well, I wouldn't say it's so much social policies. It was more the fact that um, government like can the provide government economic stimulus. Back. Yeah, it's the government. yeah, so public sector investing in the economy. Yes, um, and well, well, I guess I guess you could say, in like, if you're in a really like small sense, that like, okay, you know, fascism is the government investing in the economy, but like, is it really? No, it's not. It's not, it, it's not so much the investment in the economy; it's the mobilization of both for one aim. Um, to say, well, it's it's certainly far from a free market in the way it is literally controlled. It's not so much planned in the way that a socialist market would tend to be, it is controlled for the simple fact that if you are a industry leader and the state doesn't like you, the Gestapo will come round your house um, and sort you out. So it's not planned in the sense that they have specific economic doctrine which pushes you towards this one goal, it's do what we say or we're going to fucking kill you. <laughs> I-, I like that you broke it down for the dumb people like me. Like <laughs> you, were, you were losing me and then you brought it back for yeah, use just... of colour language and... Yeah, you're a storyteller, yeah, so, Anglo. Oh, thank so you. Just mention the Gestapo, and then ev- everyone's on board. Yeah, yeah, mate. Like any any kind of market society that has any kind of central or public planning is all based on the threat of actual death. That's what you're saying. Oh, well, like I say, it wasn't specifically planning; it was control and domination. It, it was essentially more. That sounds even worse. Yeah, it is. It, it absolutely is. I mean, I agree. I'm just, I'm just a. Uh... You know, I'm, I'm wait, wait, what was the claim that any society with planned uh, economics is is death? Is that is that what I heard? Well, essentially. So but it's it's what, enforced. It's enforced by death. But what you actually heard was 
any market society that is controlled by or, or planned by the public sector is done so with the threat of death. Yeah. Well, essentially, because if it's planned, it means you must do this or else you cannot operate. Yeah. And I'm sure like anybody who doesn't align mostly with a general libertarian ideals that just heard me say that would, would probably click off of this right now, okay. but just stay tuned. So <laughs> stay tuned. Yeah. You'll, you'll understand. Well, <laughs> different difference in opinion is, is good. And, um, a lot of the community on Instagram and, and just the libertarian community in general doesn't really like me anymore because I've kind of strayed from the general right libertarian, um, ideals that are kind of dominant in the community. There's yeah. not really a bunch of, uh, center left or left libertarians anymore because they just get ostracized for being, uh, Statist. Yeah, you fucking. You are a fucking statist. Yeah, you are statist. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Prime prime example, but um. <laughs> well, it's true. So. Oh god, right, here okay, we go. Kids, okay, well, kids. Okay. I'm just kidding. Four. I'm toning it back. I'm I'm reining it back in. Although the point, wisdom. you know, there is four quadrants of the political compass. It's not just one libertarian quadrant. That's yeah, kind it's of, that's three statist quadrants. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> in one freedom quadrant. Okay. And if you're not uh, in the very bottom right corner, you're literally a statist, am I yeah, right? The, Although the the political yeah. compass is so like polarized, because like I, I, where it places you is not, may not necessarily be accurate to your ideology. Like where it says this ideology is, is probably not accurate to a lot of the Where's anarcho primitivism? So. Where, where the hell would that come into it? It's, it's only to go off instead of oh, a like, dichotomy. It makes it what, what I don't know what you'd call it a quadcotomy if that's what you want to. Yeah, say. and it's like bleeding heart libertarianism is in the the right libertarian quadrant, which I don't think is like a proper placement for something that uh, you know wants a universal basic income. That's not even a fiscally uh, is, right is, is, is ideology like whatsoever. Is that fundamentally bleeding heart? I would just say I, I I was under the impression bleeding heart was more for specifically healthcare and maybe some benefits not universal basic income i didn't think that came into it for the most part well, social welfare but i've heard a lot of bleeding heart libertarians um advocate for uh, universal basic income which is universal basic income like i think the main argument for it is that oh the machines are going to come in and take all our jobs and the only way we're going to make money is by the government giving us a thousand dollars a month that's that's andrew yang <laughs> yang yang. obviously yeah, yeah. how obviously many of them are just shit posters <laughs> He's the largest proponent for UBI. That's actually, like, I mean, I don't even want to say he's relevant. Like he polled so bad in the the Democratic polls. Like I don't, I, yeah. I don't yeah, he's he's relevant be... because he's got like a cult following, I guess. I don't think uh, you can yeah, trust in I this guess. day and age. We can trust political polls anymore because I mean, yeah, Donald Trump sure it's and Brexit. All ironic. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? I hashtag getting trained. Well, but you know, you know the Hillary argument that Trump didn't win the popular vote. Yeah, I know. Man. Yeah, but you know, electoral college stepped in and was like, "Well, Trump's a uh, president." So, however, yeah. however, we might feel about that. I don't really have enough knowledge to like form an opinion on the electoral college, but I know a really? lot of Democrats yeah. want to um want to abolish it for some reason. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how I feel about it because like you can look at just basic numbers, like, but really, any kind of democracy is fucking retarded anyway, because it's just because fifty one percent of the population thinks this should be the way yeah. it is, and then like. Basically, the other half disagrees. Yeah, I don't think the other yeah, half should that's... be forced to live by whatever Christ, God. code yeah. the other half wants them to. But like, if you look at the electoral college maps, almost everything was red. Like, almost everything elected Trump, but slightly more actual votes counted towards Hillary than Trump. So, I mean, basically, it's like, do you want? the few large cities that hold like the bulk of the U S population to decide who the president is, or do you want literally the rest of the entire fucking country to decide who the president is? You know, kind of hard to have an opinion on that as an anarchist. Yeah. Cause you're just like, I don't yeah. like either, yeah. but honestly, it just, I think it makes more sense just to have like, if you had Lords in LA and like, you know, New York and shit, if, if you had dictators in LA and New York and they decide what was best for the whole country, you'd be like, fuck those guys. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Let's go hang them. Hang on. But like, well, because before, the before you continue, imagine if you have a you live in the UK and you have a parliament in Belgium telling you. What to do. <laughs> uh, yep. Imagine a world where that was the case. Oh, mm. uh, what, what yeah. a crazy upside down, backwards way of doing things. I really just think I don't have enough knowledge of like exactly how the electoral college works to like form my own opinion. Like, if I, I don't want to be like, okay, let's abolish it, and then not know anything really about it necessarily. I, I think it would be a real step back for representation of like ordinary people because then you're only catering to 
really one kind of lifestyle, which is like inner city people rather yeah. than so many to be to use the word diverse, you know, people in every kind yeah. of lifestyle, you know, across the country. Like to not represent them just because there's they're spread out and they're living a harder life or whatever the fuck you you want to say. But then it's like, oh, should we base representation off of population or off of um you know a certain number per state? And that's kind of where we came back when we made our bicameral legislature we made the senate based on you know two per state and then the house is based on population because some of the states were upset that some people got more representation because of this and that and there wasn't fair representation among the states so they kind of yeah again and i'm just not sure how much an anarchist opinion is worth on any of that because like that's yeah. just, i just see red discussing any of that <laughs> what, what is what but... is an anarchist worth when they completely despise government how can they discuss it well i mean you can certainly discuss it. It's just like yeah, we can discuss the absence of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and how much rope, how to how destroy it. We're live. What am I doing? <laughs> so we're back after some technical difficulties. We're back after some technical difficulties. Sorry about the delay. What yep. he said. Exactly. <laughs> the delay for them is going to be like instantaneous. It's going to be like a second between the last recording. And <laughs> <laughs> we, we do apologize. So- yeah, they're going to be like, all right, cool. All right, well, uh, sorry about the delay that this apology caused. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're just extending it. So, right, we were talking about the Electoral College. Should we move on to something a bit more broad? Yeah, that's um, really boring. What was that? Let's see, how do we feel about the... Um, how do we feel about the, the New Zealand shooting? We haven't, we haven't quite talked about that. Oh, how do it. I feel about it? Do we all agree terrorism has won? Yeah, yep. terrorism. Definitely. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would, I would say so. Like that—that that is a great, like, full-on win for them. They have made us. They, let's, they also... let's not let's not uh, undermine the tragedy of the situation. But... No, 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 sure, no, 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 absolutely not. But, but what, like, enabled, what enabled that? Tragedy? I would like I would like to say, and I would like to say this just as a uh, as a nod to how important I think it is to to let it be known that terrorism won. I made a meme. About this, yeah. not to be insensitive. To not a friend. meme. It was a meme. Ooh. It was the fat Spider-Man meme talking, kind of like, oh, yeah. you know, the Simpson chick talking. And I said, uh, "If you do exactly chick. what a terrorist wants, you're probably not doing the right thing." And it got so far. I'm still getting likes to this day because it I guess it's still trending. Yeah, likes. it has over three thousand. Wow, likes. three thousand likes. Yeah, and I don't even have that many followers. So like, that's that's, that's a good that's, meme. This is like the. <laughs> The outreach of this meme and like its response and how it's so, got more likes than I have followers should be a testament to the I fact mean, that terrorism has won. I didn't read the, the guy's manifesto, but I'm, it was really with uh, some, some white supremacy things. Um, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't recall him mentioning anything about gun control, but did he? Oh, my God. No. Yeah, 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 he's, yeah, he's yeah. an accelerationist. He said that he wanted, he said that he hoped. Um, this isn't a direct quote by any means, but basically he said that he hoped government would, would ban guns based on his actions. And the American day. government specifically. And his reason was he wanted the whole thing to turn into civil war, break up on state boundaries and by race, so that that's a way to secure a, uh, a home for which, white people. That was exactly that act, he, was specific, like... he specifically said, I could have made a bomb out of like flour, a lighter, yep, and a propulsion I'm, I'm device, but I chose to on... use guns for that reason, for the, for the, the sheer you know, impact it would have on people across the world and the the ripples it would cause and has caused. Yeah. And and so. he's he's halfway right because I think 100% it would cause a legitimate civil war. Uh, but I don't think it would necessarily split race up. I don't think. No, yeah. no, 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 no. So, that's just his own stupid fucking yeah. crazy. His, bias his own, yeah, his, his personal uh, quote unquote moral agenda that, mm. you know, a lot of ethno nationals have. Oh, we, we don't. Which we've had plenty of experience with, uh, taking on all that shit, saying like "fuck this guy," (laughs) yeah, man, and and uh, crying people in our own community who were very much like, "oh yeah, they deserved it." Like that was such a fucking mess. We we had had to get so fucking busy after that shooting. Damage control on our behalf, saying no, it was not good. Yeah, listen here, you stupid fucking sheep. Yeah, (laughs) you're not gonna follow us. The Muslims attacked us on 9/11, so they can be wiped out. I saw someone. Some guy followed Bush me. Uh, some guy followed oh, yeah. me like 
today actually a couple hours ago and this page was like an ancap page but it was also based around like ethno nationalism and i was like i don't see how that like this works like uh, yeah. that's a little bit contradictory that's Definitely the fucking that's the crux of hoppy and anarcho capitalism you, you you're a nationalist and you believe there should be no nations yeah but you're collectivizing at the same time of it's like... yeah which which it's all like just against itself and like contradictory and then they'll turn around and call people who aren't hoppians contradictory it's like yeah no a- absolute freedom with like the only restriction being don't fucking kill people and don't yeah. take their stuff like just... that is so but that's consistent. exactly what they're gonna do yeah it's almost a shame really because hop's actual writings have been quite taken badly out of proportion i i, I don't agree with the things he says um I don't think democracy is as bad of a thing as he makes it out to be, and I know the two ANCAPs here are going to disagree, but... <laughs> I completely forgot where I was lost with that. I was just ready for you two to fucking jump in, and I didn't expect no, no, you to actually... No, no, don't do the disclaimers. Just carry on, otherwise we lose our points. <laughs> All right. Um, I so promise basically... I'll you throw out every time, only when you deserve it. Okay. Well, I, I just want to divulge my point on Hop, in that he, he, he says he doesn't believe in the initiation of violence, he quite um, sincerely outlines that, but he also believes a libertarian society should ostracize those who seek to undermine it. And I have to ask, what is he actually adding to the conversation? Because it's it's just to say, use your free market to not give to money to people whose morals you don't agree with. So where does physical yeah. removal come into that? Where you say, oh, well, this one has initiated violence. So you're saying self-defense. He doesn't. I don't. That, non, so, that argument doesn't add anything to the point of the non-aggression principle and free market. So, so Hoppians, such a following. Hoppians are anti-democracy. Oh yeah, absolutely. But they, because they're, they're for the most part anarchists. So am I though. Exactly. So, yeah. Well, okay. I guess so. Anarcho. I mean, obviously, anarcho-capitalist democracy is a form of government. So obviously, anarcho-capitalists mm-hmm. are against any form of government. So. That yeah. make that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. But, I didn't know. I didn't know Hoppins were specifically like on some anti-democratic crusade. Oh, his his most famous book is called Democracy: The God That Failed, and he just spends the whole time railing off on how democracy has bribed people with their. Yeah, no. I know. I, I, <laughs> I, I mean, there's, the there's, book. I do. there's flaws in like every governmental system, but I think we can all agree, regardless of uh, political ideology, that democracy has been the uh, the best one. Maybe the we best, haven't sorted the out best of shitty. Yeah, yeah like fucking maybe options. we haven't sorted out all the kinks, but at the same time, and many um, I think the true has... republic is honestly better than. Yeah, that, honestly, democracy. that's why. Like, advocate. what about like a, a, a direct democracy, to where instead of having representatives vote on things, uh, the people vote on things. We propose laws, we vote on them. So, like, if there were a bill in Congress right now that said that we would federally make marijuana legalized, then. We would vote on it as a populist versus because a representative. Like, like, well, who would initiate uh, the vote? It would have to be the people in power, and if they didn't want something to happen, they wouldn't initiate the vote. And the, the biggest argument I've heard against like direct democracy is um, mob rule. Like, okay, like we're gonna yeah. mass these people, and one one populist is gonna get there um, well, way if, over if the rest. If you believe democracy is mob rule, then you hate representative and direct democracy. There's no real distinction if you believe it's all mob rule because the fifty one percent rules the forty nine. Well, no, I, I was just discussing like generalities of both systems. I'm, right. I'm, I'm for democracy. I don't know what way we, we want to do it. I have to do some research on which one I would like better. But obviously, we have representative democracy in the majority of the world. I don't think I don't know of a direct democracy offhand. Uh, like Local. ancient Athens, and that's about it. Yeah, like, Athens, but that's. It. Modern is not we we haven't implemented that in a modern system and and you know economics and uh, politics has changed so much in the last hundred years where some historical things aren't really relevant. Yeah, but you got to remember if we had a true democracy right now, and they voted to ban assault weapons, assault oh, weapons would be fucked. Banned. Yeah, that's true. Then you don't. Well, I don't know. But you know, it, if we were to take away the Second Amendment, I think. That would obviously spark a civil war. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think that's like, some, and something if it of that it, level is the only it, catalyst that would actually make a change. Yeah, I think something. Right. And and if it didn't, you'd know for sure that thousands of government agents would die. <laughs> yeah. Like oh, so hundreds yeah, of thousands, more no, than likely. Here's, here's my issue with this: that you're saying you advocate for democracy. Well, I mean, a form of democracy currently. Potential civil war is like worth that. Implementing this true democracy. 
Well, it's like a collapsitarian point of view, right? But you're not well, a depends, it, Yeah, it depends uh, on if you're after. Yeah, I wouldn't say, I mean, I like to avoid death, but if that's necessary, then that's something I think we have to face as like a society, but I wouldn't want to. Ah, but right, then on, couldn't no, you uh, agree that a, that a system that would allow something like that to happen probably shouldn't exist? Allow civil war? Yeah. Well, or, I think a civil war could likely... amount in any governmental system. I mean, it happened in the Roman Empire, it happened in exactly. monarchies, it happened yeah, in democracies. Right. Yeah, any it governmental happened... system could cause a civil war. So maybe those shouldn't exist. Ah, uh, so you're saying, you're saying, yeah, you're saying no government, there's oh, not going to be a civil war. You, how did you but not see be... that one coming? You fell right into that. Yeah, I, I did, didn't I? Well, I mean... Well, it's not just some gotcha, it's a very, you know, important point. Oh, yeah, like, you can see it coming. Kind of always... gotcha, yeah. But that's a civil war from, like, a political perspective perspective like a governmental perspective but a civil war can still happen sure it might not be warranted by government action but it could still yeah, happen so like okay my racial, racial group man. disagrees yeah, with yours exactly. in, in a and cap society so either way i think i think human conflict is completely unavoidable like on yeah. any can you any tell me of a civil it's, war it's unavoidable uh in some fashion government sanctioned mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well it, mm-hmm. uh I want to play a bit of devil's advocate and say, is that not is he dead? fair? What happened because... to Punk? <laughs> I think you have just killed him. No, he's, oh, he's or, no. I know. I'm here. Are you Googling? No, I, uh, I didn't hear what you said because my internet is shit. So rephrase, please. I'm not rephrasing. I'll give myself a quote okay. of myself. All right. Okay. <laughs> so can you tell me of a civil war that happened in history that wasn't at least halfway sanctioned by government action? So what happened in history? Well, let's see. My my historical knowledge is not that wide. If if I'm trying to think of a civil war that didn't happen because of government action, so you'd have to think of a civil war that was warranted by cultural perspective, more than likely. It would be something that would be warranted by race, culture, religion, something like that. Yeah. But it's about the definition of a civil war, I'm sure if you look up the definition, it would be one one nation okay yeah but you know, you know what I, mean, that, I mean like i mean like a, a war well, there's been religious wars they're like the crusades and things you could you that could call that a civil war between yeah. muslims and christians that was, that was that civil, was government. But civil war is like a definition is is governmental well the, i mean the, the vatican and the uh, the pope was its own state in and of itself yep if you want to yeah. talk about okay, the crusades so, theocracy yeah. Punk, if I'm being honest, I think you're giving yourself a cop-out right now, because you know that's not exactly what I mean. I don't mean, like, the strict confines of the definition of a government causing a war. I mean, like, a civil war. Like, uh, you have uh, a war within the borders of a country. Like, yeah. you, you know, like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it's a government or not. I just want an example of how a civil war could happen that wasn't sanctioned by a state or a government. Like an actual example, not like a hypothetical, because I could come up with those all fucking day. Well, well how can you give an actual we, we, example when we haven't had a widespread it, anarchist it, society to put to, Exactly, to that's the that problem point. too. I mean, I could go back and say, okay, well, like you had the Triumvirates in the Roman Empire to where, you know, Octavian disagreed with, uh, I Mark think Anthony. it was... Mark Antony, yes, thank you. Mm-hmm. But that was that was run by political rulers. They had the power, Absolutely. though. I, power I'm not struggle. gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna right. rise up myself with my with my rifle and say, okay, I'm starting a civil war by myself. That's not how that works. You have to have exactly. some so, form of, you have to have some yeah. form of like widespread leadership. Which yes, you could say it's the government. Correct. Yeah, my point is that well, a civil to, war would not happen without government influence or, or direct sanction. Well, it wouldn't be called a civil war without government. Yeah, it would. It would just be a war. So any yeah. sort of internal conflict in a society, as our sort of definition within this debate, you know, that's I think what guns are getting at. Not necessarily yeah. a government splitting in two, but any sort of society splitting into two. Going yeah. Into let me, okay. Let me. I'll, I'll rephrase. <sighs> any widespread armed conflict within the borders of a nation that is not sanctioned by a government. Well, if. I've, I've... Maybe look at the Congo and Sudan. I don't know how much government is involved in that, but they're not places known for having a strong centralized power, but they've been at war with each other for fucking decades. Yeah, like tribal wars and shit happen all the well, time. You know, Native well, American tribes killing each other in the United States borders in the 1800s. That's, like, that's, that still, that, that's still states, though, really. And yeah, those American are government. Tribes. And I, but, well, I, I, okay, I, retract, tribe... I retract the Congo because that was essentially a. a, a tried communist takeover, Che Guevara was yeah. commanding forces there. So yeah, I'll take these that are all government. Okay, but couldn't you argue that like, 
like a community could also form a state or be a state in itself, like an ANCAP society to where you have these communities that aren't ruled by necessarily one centralized state that could easily act as a centralized state. If Enforcing the NAP is a great example of that. Like you can have these people who are going to rise up similar to a state to enforce the non-aggression principle. That's something that is very similar to a state. Yeah, There's but then very... they, they wouldn't be fighting a, a war. They'd be defending themselves if they are actually anarchists. Or well, you'd anarchists. hope. You'd hope everyone would follow that principle, right? Yeah, there's not going to be any sort of big political aims in these conflicts. It's going to be purely like self-defense, and it's going to be a lot more at risk to the individual. Yeah, but my than point is, very, like, very optimistic, no longer, though. If it's no longer that, then it's no longer stateless, and it is a government acting that way. But my whole point of this entire conversation so far has been that like, you're not going to have widespread, literal fucking legal murder without governments. Legal murder? War. Yeah, wars of aggression. Yeah, and so it's exactly how a defensive military war, is, war is legal the purpose murder. of a I don't, state. I, don't think, I don't think you could even make an argument to say that war isn't legal murder. I mean, no, I'm not. I'm not denying that that war is legal murder. But I mean, war as broad. we know it absolutely is legal murder because we don't fight defensive wars. Oh, they haven't done Western for a society. long fucking time. There's been, I think, the three biggest. And I'm going to kind of reinforce your point here. I think there's there's two things that, or three things, let's preface, there's three things that really cause civil wars and, and conflict. It's the state, it's religion, and it's culture. That's the three things people disagree on. Yep. The state's going to maybe cause some conflict. Maybe I don't like your religion, because my but, religion says to kill your religion, or some, some, some of that yeah, sort. Your at culture least, at least two of those mine. anonymous. Yeah, exactly. So I'm not I'm not necessarily disagreeing you with you that state causes conflict, but state does a lot more things than than just cause conflict. Not really. Everything they do causes conflict. Well, I have that... very much enjoyed having guns in the conversation today. It's nice to have a second anarchist. <laughs> well, fuck off. Me and Punk are both on our own then. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah, I'm even I'm even way different than Anglo. Yeah, no. Yep. We we can't even have each other's back. <laughs> Obviously, I'm I'm only like central no one by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You two are just railing off on him, so I'm just I'm just keeping well, no, shit. Well, not necessarily. Not, I, know, I mean, I think it's a good conversation. Okay. That's fair. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was unfair. I would I would think this is an interesting conversation. If I, I I'm actually quite impressed that we have covered so much ground so civilly. Like I was expecting yeah. a lot more. A lot more uh, commie jokes. Yeah. And there's time for those. Well, because we there, specifically said that always... in this episode we're not talking about healthcare, so we can wait for Hashtag the commie sure jokes. Yeah, God knows so if that... you follow me on Instagram, I like to post about healthcare. Right, that is not a cue for us to start talking about it. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stay away from this. I can feel myself getting drawn in like a fucking black <laughs> hole right now. So. <laughs> Sucking in all the light. Like a moth to right. a flame. I, w- I would like... and and. I'm not even trying to convince you of this. I just want to make a point. Yeah. The only thing the state does is create conflict. They they literally can't do anything else because everything they do is coercive. Oh, it's well, yeah, achieve, achieve through a monopoly of force. Yeah. So I mean, either on a very small scale or potentially massive. Yeah, so even if yeah, it's it not like... an all-out literal war, even if it is simply and a minarchist society or just uh, a form of government that, that only provides to the people health care, whatever, universal income, housing, whatever it is, you're still acquiring the means for that with the threat of violence or further fining or literal abduction. Not even and depending on how much you want to resist that kind of thing, death. You, you, well, you said such a thing would be apparent in a minicist state, and that's not true. Because yes, it the, would. No, the founding of, of, of min, the idea of minicky is taxation is theft. We do not disagree with that whatsoever. All so how would you fund the government? Voluntarily. Do you think people would not voluntarily fund the government? Because I love when people say they don't. Because there's one thing you can immediately pull out your bag, and that is that in terms of total charity donations, the vast majority of Western countries donate about half... In 50% to charity of what the government already collects in tax revenue. So if no forced taxation was done, why do you think people would not still pay? 
because they clearly do. There are still massive payments to charity, and so I'd be thoroughly. Uh, yeah, I would pay to charity. The middle state so. could be voluntarily funded. People, people would pay for it. Excuse me. Excuse you. Is nobody gonna fucking say bless you? <laughs> I didn't know if it was a glitch or a sneeze, so I just, I just stayed shut up. Why well, would I say excuse me to a glitch? Yeah, maybe I don't know. Maybe you need to be excused. I, I don't excuse Skynet, mate. It's a scary fucker. <laughs> anyway. So. So taxation but if it's, is um, theft. Minicus will not yeah. say otherwise. Well, if it's. If it's all voluntary, then it's not really a state anymore. Well, how so? It's just it's, a, it's just a service it's just a, you can. It's just an work. organization, yeah. If it's if it's all voluntary, it's just a fucking business. It's just like anything else. Well, it's code, either... codified by a constitution that these officials have to work by. And you know what? There is the potential to say that if the people said, you know what, we don't need this fucking state, they didn't pay for it, and it collapsed, and it devolved into anarchy, then why not? The uh, the principle I think of is that if it, if government was to do just about, I want to say just about because I do believe in a very, 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 very strict constitution, if they were to do anything that was within the realms of voluntary funding, what is the, where is the immorality if they do not uh, violate anybody's rights by doing so? And what I mean by that is if the government found that it had a budget surplus after the tax year collections of people saying, yeah, you know what, I'll give this money to... Um, to this department to fund it, give it to that one. When you're filling out the tax form, we could say, if we have a budget surplus, what would you like it to go to? And you could tick subsidising healthcare, or poverty relief, or farming subsidies and things like that, just to alleviate farming prices in the market. Subsidy. Now, I don't mean farming subsidies the way we know it. I mean literally donating to the industry to make the product cheaper to recoup losses and sell it at a I lower think, price. And it's because it's, it's all voluntarily funded, it's a budget surplus, and you can say, yeah, sure, I'd like to make these products cheaper, and the government can centralise this problem for me. I think like, um, um, a farmer who has his crops insured federally, and every year during the wet season, his crops flood, and he loses the entire crop, and then he collects a check from the government, and every year, they fucking insure it again. Well, yeah, because I, I don't th it, it's not comparable in the state we have the one. No, no, that's just a little anecdote. Fair enough. Yeah. So, um, well, there's, 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 there, there is the thing to say, obviously, it's just an institution. It doesn't have a Qu question. Force. Yeah, go on. Question, question for my uh, ANCAP now, friend. Now is not the time for questions. Move hey, uh, no, genuinely, how do you plan on achieving an ANCAP society? Obviously, in, you know, these how so? How so? Just kill the politicians. Do you Molotov think? Cocktail. Okay, I think what nobody's disagreeing here that anarcho capitalism is quite a polarized point of view. I think I don't think anyone. Oh yeah, well, it's literally disagreed. in the corner of the compass. It's not exactly massive yeah. people. Yeah, they they, they put so. us nose to the wall in the corner. So yeah. so we've, we've had things in the corners of the compass been been um. Implemented before. We've had communism, we've had fascism, we've had national socialism. We've, where, I, we've, where had, we've we... had them in the authoritarian corners. We've never but those had, had but those, Yeah, yeah, because those have all been enforced by a state. So, uh, but at what point, how, how the hell come to accomplish uh, uh, Ankapistan? Have like, any of you even... heard of um, Nestor Maknov? That's too big a word for me. No, it's a name. Nestor Maknov. It is ah, a... Not at all. It Names was... are words. Well, a, a guy... <laughs> Especially <laughs> foreign ones. It's a pronoun, then, if you want to go there. So, <laughs> Nestor Makhnov set up a anarchist society in southern Ukraine uh, around about the time of the end of World War One and the Russian Revolution and the Red Army, and got into some serious fucking fights with the USSR and Trotsky, especially. Oh, I've heard about this. Yeah, and so an 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 with an anarchist an anarchist communist society has existed in that form and also does exist um, at the moment in Syria. It's referred to as Rojava and officially as the free uh, uh, I think they call it the free state of Syria or something along those lines oh so not the Kurdish I think oh, they're, I, I think they're, they are they're commonly like socialist communist kind of types they, they come from, about, I don't think all of Kurdistan is considered so part of that the, but you're, 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 the Ukrainian thing you're referring to is called the, the free territory yeah the f Ukrainian free territory or something like that yeah um, yeah it only lasted three years yeah it did not. Um, but the point is it's being tried and that he, I, I, I 
don't know enough about it, but he achieves it. He managed to get people to rally around him and say, we don't want a state, we're going to fight anyone, I don't give a shit if if you call <laughs> yourself socialist or not. We are not being ruled. And, I mean, that's been tried. It's it, it's the only the only corner that hasn't been tried is anarcho-capitalism. And Lieberland, do we all know about Lieberland? Yep. Okay. Anyone else? Hmm? No. Nope. Oh, no, no. Right, well, Lieberland is a micro-nation next to Croatia that was set up by a Czech politician to be basically the minimal state that libertarians have wet dreams over. Um, they currently have, like, nothing. It's basically more nothing more than fucking concept it's... art. But yeah. it, it, it does exist, and it's being built upon. But that's still not even anarcho-capitalism. It, your yeah, corner is I the only one that's never been that tried. I just forgot about it. But yeah, anarcho-capitalism is the only corner of the compass that hasn't been tried. We've had Pinochet in the very top right. Obviously, we had Nazism and Fascism in the top middle. Maoism and Stalinism top left. Maknov and Rojava bottom left. And nothing on the bottom right. So, it begs the question... How this is we... the scariest one. Well, I mean, there is that. <laughs> do, 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 do we think... I mean, anarcho-capitalism is, like, a new ideology, though. It I is. think Rothbard was invented in the 60s. Uh, the 80s, 80s, yeah, the 80s. It's, it's that young. Oh, okay. See, so there's there's really been enough time for it to be tried, but it's very it's it's polarized as shit. Really, it's it's extremely radical. Yeah, I also think it's a, it's a fact that that uh no, I I don't I don't really believe that um bottom left can exist statelessly. You know. See, I I disagree with that, but continue. Well, because I mean, because what if what if one dude in that country disagrees? Yeah, and what well, then? well, well, yeah, that, that's that's why I call a black flag anarchist than you know, ANCAP or anything else. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I understand our personal opinions, but yeah, like, what if I was in the free state of Syria or whatever, and I was like, well, this is kind of bullshit. You know, I work hard trimming See, the... hedges all day. Like, maybe I should keep the shit that I. <laughs> See, perhaps, perhaps that's where we differentiate even from ANCAPs, where we're like, we're not even really bomb right, because it's more like, do whatever you want, don't hurt anyone, I'm going to do my preference, you do yours, yeah, and you can exactly. walk away from either. So I don't think, personally, that bottom left or bottom right strictly would work, and that's why I've never used... Well, no, no, because bottom bar. right, you can do whatever you want, bottom right. You can't yeah, yeah, do whatever yeah. you want, bottom I, left. I, I guess it's it's finding... When you, when you say NCAP, everyone's like, oh, private cities everywhere. But it's like, it's not. You can go off and do your own fucking right. thing. But yeah, it's the right. thing. I mean, I understand. Okay, I know. I, 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 know, I know. Very. I'm in the left libertarian quadrant, and I know very little about anarcho communism. So, with that being said. I think it's an going impossibility. To, I'm go, I, think, yeah. honestly, I don't know if I'm yeah. about to say it's an impossibility. I think anarcho capitalism is an impossibility as well. I, well, here's, here's the thing of why well, I think anarcho communism is a far less sustainable thing than anarcho-capitalism and it comes from Marx's own well I want to say axioms but that's not the right word the word that his theory is that you have communism which is stateless and classless and you have socialism which is the inter it's the interim state to collectivize everything and then once the owners successfully own the means of production capitalism and the bourgeoisie have been expelled the state will just give up and die and they'll become stateless <laughs> how ridiculous of, of a belief is that if if oh yeah once stalin had killed all the kulaks and caused the holodomor and stopped the ukrainian um uh independence movement he could have easily gone okay look job done the bourgeoisie is gone we're we're collective enough right now aren't we um he he achieved this before Hitler was staring as a threat, so he didn't need to mobilize everyone to war. Why why did he not give the workers the means of production and just roll over and die? I mean, he did roll over and die in the end in his own puddle of piss. But it, it, it's sure is, if you put so much, if, if you centralize so much power, it, no, no one's going to give it up voluntarily, and it's completely ludicrous. You know, to think you so know what's crazy the though. Good. Hold on, uh, pause. Gramps. Oh, here's here he is. Yo, yo, what's good, guys? I'm here. What did okay. And we're live. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, don't let, me, don't let me interrupt. I'll just listen in and catch up. Keep you, know, you, know what's, you know what's crazy, though, about the history of the Soviet Union? So Lenin had things fairly stabilized for, like, ten years. Yeah, and Trotsky right. was supposed to be Lenin's successor. Yes. And was supposed to kind of carry on with Lenin's Sorry. ideologies. But Sorry, Stalin man. came in and made it, like, much more totalitarian and, you know, started, obviously, purging all the 
Leninist and Trotskyist and kind of fucked up the Soviet Union. So I'm going to say there's a point to where you can say the Soviet Union kind of failed because of Stalin. Like, it wasn't really what it was supposed to be. Maybe, but then we can... Well, this is fun, because we could say exactly the same thing about George Washington and the whiskey excise. And, um, saying that we're going to start a war over a 3% tax on tea, and then it was a very similar tax he implemented on whiskey, and then was surprised when the people rebelled again. But that's... See, a... this is my argument against minicism. I think giving power to anyone at any level, even a night watchman state, they always grow it. So just dissolving the government completely and not allowing any cancer... I use the word cancer. To regrow is the only way to keep a free society. Uh, well, my yeah. criticism of it is that the Constitution is nowhere near strict enough. The too many yeah. things are left open to interpretation. Oh, no, man. That shit is literally in black and white and people are stepping on <laughs> Well, if it's literally in black and white, then what's a well-regulated militia that has the right to keep and bear arms? What the fuck does that mean? Uh, is that, that, is that, that, that means, like, a private citizen. That, that's a, a liberty that's extended to an individual. I mean, yeah. I agree that I agree with the premise of what you're saying slightly, but ultimately, it's I don't probably still one of like the... <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> Our favorite word. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Well Perhaps regulated means you, you don't use steel cased ammo. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So I think that's exactly what. Yeah. So the Supreme Court has thankfully taken a good interpretation of it, but that's exactly what it is. It's an interpretation. Like honestly, I think if we were to have a, a minic state, I believe would be a true republic and like a constitution that goes on for fucking years. That's what I haven't really understood. It's like, how do we know that we're interpreting interpreting this properly? <laughs> exactly. Like, is there really any way? Like, we can't go talk to Thomas Paine and Benjamin Franklin and George Washington and be like, are we doing this properly? Yeah. There's no way for us to confirm that we're interpreting the constitution correctly. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we can read I mean, it and be like, okay, right to bear arms, we have that, but there's so many things that are deeper in context that we, we have no understanding of. Clues, and you can be like, well, these guys literally just waged a war on the government, so that they probably don't agree with the existence of it. At least people, at people, people don't. People don't do well, that we have to fit their agenda. We know how that went. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, but the Second Amendment only applies to hunting and sport. Uh, how the fuck do right. people come to that conclusion? But I, I believe yeah. that's because it that's is just a terrible argument. Uh, like. It only, it only comes to sport. Like, that's just a really terrible argument. That's, well, that's yeah. what Reagan said. I just had that conversation with my dad. Well, yeah, I like fucking like cry. Fucking Reagan was the biggest fucking cock we've ever dealt with. He <laughs> 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 really was. I'm not sure why conservatives praise him so much. Reagan was sure. why, dude. I same, same my best to dispel that shit. They just run around, they act like he's some fucking poster child for liberty. And the guy was practically a fucking communist. Well, I mean, you know, not to <laughs> Look at it in the context the across the Atlantic because we had Reagan and Thatcher hand in hand, and now Thatcher is, is, is the, the post. Yeah, exactly. But now Thatcher's the poster girl of free Britain. Like, excuse me, what the <laughs> fuck did she do? She deregulated industry, and that then that's all she did in ten years. And, and then fucking, dipped. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, no, then she then she instituted a poll tax that everyone fucking hated and had to retire. <laughs> So, you know, no, I, was, I don't know. I don't I know. Those are probably what the two largest neocons that we know, besides George Bush, Thatcher, and Reagan. Uh, oh, no, that's that's, that's a hard argument. Trump yeah. Yeah. take take the fucking yeah. podium on that one. <laughs> Trump takes Trump takes so many weird stances though. Because he's he's fucking inconsistent and says whatever he needs. to. No, I mean he doesn't know what he's doing. He has no political like experience. He do, he literally doesn't know what he's doing. No, he's probably yeah, right. but he's pretty. He's pretty like, he doesn't. He doesn't consistent with other uh, quote unquote. He is, I don't think he understands technicalities. Like, who the fuck calls a national emergency for a border wall? I like, guess that's not something you do. That's not something the president has ever done. It's that's something, something you, you do, do if you are in a bipartisan state and you are la leaving that gate open for a different government but, to enforce its own fucking agenda. But there's Perhaps been so many presidents who have had moment. terrible congresses and done better without having to do that. The national emergency bullshit. Yeah, it is absolute bullshit. I think it's all part of a plan, honestly. That's exactly what I mean. Deep state shit. Could easily be. Have you guys heard that claim that says, like, the fascists make the trains run on time? What? what? It's, it's talking about, like, fascist efficiency. It's like the, that also Benito the Mussolini made, made the trains run on time or whatever. Something like that. Yeah, I that sure do, like, punctual trains. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's worth it, then. Yeah. It's... 
I think if you were a train driver with a gun to your head, you would be on time, to be honest. Yeah. I don't think that quite justifies don't, don't it. do get enslavement. Yeah. Labor enslavement as well. Yeah, kind of like left libertarianism. Uh... <laughs> 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 All right, okay. Libertarian punk has left the chat. Yeah, no, no, no point in that one. If I'm not talking, it's because the internet is, is lapsing. It's always yeah. very convenient when your internet laps, I, I do have to say. Yeah. yeah. It's, God's, it's God's plan. Oh, that's <laughs> Here's a right. question then. Who's religious in here? I'm going to need to... Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, we what? need to wrap up, is all I'm saying. What happened? He's going to go chase some poon. <laughs> I do, I do. It's uh, I will die if I don't. So uh, we will, we will, we will call this episode one here, gentlemen. No, no, no. We we can we can do one last little thing. I'm cool, but I'm just okay. Saying. So Angle is going to ask about religion. Let's go into I was only going to be completely off topic, not a debate, but who is religious in here? Is there anyone? Uh, I'm just out here. I'm like fairly religious. Say, you had the impression that blah blah blah. And I'd oh, like to that hear Americans are for the most part religious because it's not the case here. We have to be majoritively atheist in this country i believe but i'm under the impression americans are very likely christian i just wanted to confirm that, that well, right or not. like 98 percent of our legislature is like christian so i mean yeah or they say they are at least yeah they, they're hippie, they're just as hypocrites as big hypocrites as the the, the rest of them <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'd say i'd say i'm christian but i wouldn't say i'm like a strict uh, follower of every belief you know I'm I'm an atheist. Um, I don't believe in imaginary people, but um, <laughs> my opinion. Well, the way I, the way the saying I look at religion, and this is like from kind of an unbiased perspective, is um, there's so many things we can't really explain, like it or not, and um, I think that the Christian way, at least Jesus in general, was the best explanation we have for divinity right now well do, do you want do you want to hear the agnostic argument which i believe fits in perfectly yes, with, sure. with an individualist i don't fucking know so i'm not going to pretend to that's so, fair yeah. that's kind of, i respect that a lot actually yeah. see i'm just an arrogant asshole and i say there's no god fuck off well there you go that's an atheist to <laughs> but say can, atheist, but can you really anti-atheist. believe that because how, I, how, does, how does all the, i mean we could get into fucking philosophy if we no, wanted no, no, to like, maybe we could we save that for the next for episode shit. yeah like, because this could get really deep you know, the, on politics, I'm very measured with, but on religion, it's because personally for me, it's not important. I just, it's a gut feeling. I don't need a higher power to to exist. I don't believe in it. So I just very, very bluntly say there isn't one. You know, how could there be? And people can believe what they want, but for me, it's just as blunt as that. I don't care. If I, if I die and see a white light and I have to go and talk to some guy at fucking gate, I'll be like, oh, sorry. That, that I'll be like, hilarious, dude. Oh, my God. Yeah, like, there's that, there's that, uh, there's that I, quadrant I, theory. I forgot what it was called. But it basically says that why not believe? Because if you believe and it's you die. It, it, no, 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 no. Because if you believe and you die and you go to heaven, then you go to heaven, right? But if you don't believe and you die, you go to hell. No, so man. like, so like, there's so like, I forgot, I forgot the precise term for it. No, it's, that's, it's a theory that's that was written, and it's that's basically a lot of people has a lot, a lot of people justify their faith being a Christian in the Christian community in like a very uh, secular uh, world. Say, that's that's how a lot of people justify it. That is the weakest justification I've ever heard in my fucking life. Yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that I mean I was like raised Catholic. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it didn't take me long to figure it all out. But I mean, in my opinion, it's just one giant system to control, you know, large populations of people. It's the idea and, of the well, Kat, that's not what that wasn't Jesus's intention, though. Not uh, Jesus, but whoever, whoever yeah, came up but, with him. I mean, it, have, it didn't have guy. to be Jesus's intention. You know, it wasn't any of our founding fathers intention that we would be here in the situation that we're in. Um, it's just the, just how natural how progression is. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's it's obvious to spot the manipulation because if there was a god who awarded, uh, rewarded good behavior or morals with entrance into heaven, yeah. why would he say you have to believe in me or else you're not getting in there? That's you don't. You're not immediately yeah, not like, a moral yeah, person if you don't there's, believe there's in so the god. Many, well, you can obviously see where it's been written into control. And yes. 
yeah, Agreed. manipulate collective a waste takes... is a good word to use. No, a god that takes yeah. attendance is one that I won't respect. I don't care if if he does exist and he's pissed. That's not really like a loving god, is it? So what's the point? If if he accepts me for being an atheist, well, cool. I'll, to, I'll to play devil's advocate, I guess. <laughs> Literally? Yes, I'm advocating for the devil right now. This is a new <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the militia does no, Satan. The e Satanist uh, to play, podcast. To play devil's advocate, a couple of things. If you are uh, debating or just discussing uh, government in general with an American, they're probably Christian, and you should remind them that you should not bow to any earthly masters. Because that is okay. scripture. No, yeah, that is that, is that is scripture. Okay, However, so like that's something I say a lot. It's like I don't support government because I don't support earthly masters. I don't believe that another human being has the right to tell me how I should live my life. I think that's up to the creator to who's actually in charge. Even though I don't necessarily believe this. I'm not yeah. I'm not religious at all. But another it's, thing it's that I will say way- is that there has to be a creator somewhere like i don't yeah, know what it is I don't know a dude in a robe or like i don't know if he if he had a son that was jesus or not but like there's something otherwise there would agree be nothing. completely that's i think that's i think that's a very very good stance well, the that, way i look at it though, you're talking about bootlickers yeah that is agnostic the best what Bootlick was saying being like raised catholic i think there's a difference between believing in jesus's teaching and believing in some institutionalized church that thinks they know exactly what jesus was saying i've never oh, been to a church that i can support well, or Ever. people who say that Trump was sent by God. No, that's 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 tough. <laughs> so we the chat. we could argue about philosophy and religion and the creation of the world for three hours on I a podcast. I fucking love philosophy, so if we did that one day, I'd be happy. Yeah, that wouldn't be. <laughs> I feel like that would be pretty interesting for some people, but also extremely boring and triggering for uh, quite a few. It could be, but I know Fox. Um, has quite a keen interest in theological philosophy, so he would have been perfect to get in here, but... Uh, we'll we'll yeah. drag him in for a, a more full discussion. Yeah. Anyway, you need to go. I do, I do need so to... So, uh... we're wrapping this up as episode one. Sounds like it. Yeah, well, sorry I was late to party. Yeah, it's good to have you, doing. Alright, mm. so are we off the record yet? No, so say what you were going to say, because <laughs> it's recording. Mm, no, I'll wait. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> well i think we can i think we can call that a podcast this is my cliffhanger so, so... next time to hear what i was gonna say but didn't say yeah that's a good one hey, what's, up with the, uh, what's up with the intro how'd that come out dude did you uh... i just i just say and we're live yeah oh okay all right yeah. <laughs> i'd say i said that how much footage did we get well i'm currently on 43 minutes and we had about 20 before so that's about well. right then oh wow so can't we got like an hour or something the, uh, yeah cutting out the messy yeah. stuff that's that, what that, we should shoot I, for i feel like that was a super solid conversation and podcast yeah i'm happy with that one You're, we just got to trim the 20 minutes and the 45 minutes together and make sure it's don't worry yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, 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 I, I think anybody tuning all. in it was going to recognize that we're just getting this thing started and, <laughs> yeah. no but i think that's fun for a lot of people yeah, I totally agree, dude. I think I think there'll be people. I think I think uh, a majority of people will kind of give us a little bit of leniency, um, but we'll probably have this tacked down and have a, a like yeah. a good so, idea. Anything? Well, let's just yeah. look at it this way: when when we're all political superstars and we're all living in the same house mansion and we're all sat around one table <laughs> doing this podcast, <laughs> our loyal fans oh, can look yeah. back at where, how it all first started and just Absolutely. gaze it all. Yeah, like, I, I never want that to be <laughs> That is my personal hell. You guys, <laughs> I, I, you're locked into the audience. Imagine if we did become like the most popular political podcast. That'd be quite something. Goals, goals yeah. for the future. Yeah, let, let's, let, let's let's set some realistic Level. goals. <laughs> let's let's let's, let's get let's get a hundred views. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah let's just make an impression. Let's just uh. Change one person's mind. Yeah, Anglo, you might have to edit out the last couple of minutes because this has been kind of screechy, honestly. <laughs> Who cares? It's fun. Fuck it. Well, well uh, this isn't going in the podcast we're talking about right now. It probably will. Why not? It's all good fun. <laughs> ben. Son of a bitch. Okay. You're whatever. always on the record when the NSA is around. Or well, just, or we're we're all the here recording me when I didn't consent to be recorded. Ah, uh, bullshit. Ooh. Violation of NAP. Anyway, what, what are you going to do about it? Nah. You will be shot.
Come on, try it. <laughs> Come on, I'm mate. You, you should see the. You should see the. You should see my barrel. fucking spoon. Oh yeah. You ready? <laughs> All right. Well, we can we can keep on nattering about bullshit for days. So. Yeah, but I need to I need to go and try and get some and probably fail and then All drink right. myself to sleep. Let cool. Let us know how that goes. I will. All right. <laughs> well, well anyway, you, I'd like it to go before. on the record. Really quick, that when we are all political superstars living in the same mansion, I am 100% going to be rooming with Anglo. Oh yeah, dude, I was I was just about to say the same thing. I bet you were. You, if you sleep with that, socks that on, room, I'm gonna be really fucking angry. I don't that sleep room with socks on unless I'm expecting a home intruder. <laughs> How does socks help? I need to ask. <laughs> because I have hardwood floors. I made a meme about this. My, it was the, <laughs> it was the scared. I think I remember that. Actually. It was the scared hamster meme. Y'all know what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah. And it was my home intruders <laughs> when they see me in nothing but a plate carrier and socks, sliding <laughs> on my hardwood floors carrying two medieval swords. I just found it. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, yeah. good. Okay. Well, yes, I thank you all for joining. This has been great ones. fun. Oh, but Bootlickers is gone. He got a bit. Fucking He's like, up yep, out. Yeah, we take. He's like, that was enough. Meme descriptions were enough. Yeah. Done my duty. When we're describing our Instagram memes, things have gotten pretty bad. Yeah. So, well, thank you guys. This has been great fun. And I yeah, I think this was a good first episode. It certainly was. Don't forget I, I to subscribe. Hope... Yes, of course. Subscribe. Click the bell notification. But only if you want to. No. Don't, don't let us force you into anything. No. That's our whole thing. No, this is, this is the collective. Our viewers are under our direct command. Okay. Fucking subscribe right now. Yep. Or Gulag. Or we will, we will or, send or you to a work camp. Violated. Yeah, that's it. All right, then. By clicking on this video, you consented to subscribe. You signed the social contract. There you go. Ta-da! Okay. Gotcha. Well, right, we need to end this right. or else we're going to keep on going. So thank you all, guys. It's been great fun. I hope anyone watching this, if anyone at all, has enjoyed it. And I'm sure yep. we'll keep doing this because it's, it's just good fun to talk about bullshit True. with a bunch of uh, libertarian fellow autists. I agree. Anyway, this has been the E Militia live, but it won't be live when you hear it. Oh, it'll be heavily edited. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to condense it down Apple. to 30 seconds of us just saying. It was just, live at one point. I'm just, I'm just going to clip it to where we're talking about how the Jews control the world and just leave it at that. Please don't. Oh my god. I already <laughs> yeah, that'll be a great 30 okay. second podcast. I'm cutting that bit out. So I regret saying anything about it, honestly. Oh, that's... All right, well, I think so red flaggy. Fine. Right, well, we need guns and guillotines to finish it. Just tell us that we're, we're no longer live. All right, we're about to not be live anymore, guys, but it was a pleasure talking with you. All right, goodbye. Everyone say bye. Don't forget to wave. Bye, right. waving. Later. <laughs>